What you're looking at here is eventually going to be turned into a bowl, at least I hope so. And what you're looking at is very fascinating for sure, but it doesn't look like that when it stops. And I'll show you how I make each strip and how I glue them together. And if you're interested in making one, later on in the video, I'll have something made to show you how you can make something similar to this. You're not going to need a special machine or a special fixture. You're just going to need a bandsaw. So I think before I get too dizzy, we better get busy and get going. Well that sure doesn't look like a bowl, but it does kind of look like a wave. We'll have 20 pieces alternating the woods in between each one, like that. How we're going to do this is I've got my stock, I've made a template, trace around that, Cut the pieces out. Now I have it roughed out where I can machine it. In order to grab it, I'll be gluing it onto a strip of wood like that so I can clamp it in my mill. So these will be CNC cut. And I know that most people don't have a CNC mill or a router. So what I'm doing right now is, while I'm building this, I'm making another one of these with a lot more gentle curve to it. You'll be able to cut that on your bandsaw, and the joints should fit together perfectly. You're not even going to need a special fixture to do it. So, I've already proved it out, so I know it's going to work. And I'm going to try to show you that towards the end of the video. And if needed, we'll make a special video for that. Let's move over to my mill. We'll cut one of these. We're not going to cut all, because it looks exactly the same. So, I'll meet you over there. Okay, it's time to start gluing them together, and that's kind of what they look like there. Well, I just bandsawed this around and I trued it up in the lathe. Now it's time to cut some rings. I've used this fixture on a couple of them and it works pretty good. It sets here and it sets the tool on a 45 degree angle is what I'm cutting. I'm still working on perfecting this so I'm not going to recommend that you even make one of these. What you can do, and this is this will work quite well, you get your tool up here Put it where you want it cut. Hold that right there. Look down the tool. Put a piece of tape on here. Now you can look here, look down, start your cut. Once you're in there about a quarter inch, the tool will follow that groove. And that'll actually work quite well. If you happen to be off a degree or two, I'm not going to tell anyone because it actually will still work. Well, let's go ahead and start cutting some rings.
I've got the last ring all set to be glued in place and I know I went fast through the other ones because it's actually probably kind of boring watching but the process is I've made marks where they line up that's how this board was positioned before I cut it into rings so what I need to do is get it on here and then I align all the joints but then I'm going to let it set for maybe five minutes until it tacks up. And that's why I know you don't want to watch the board just sit there. So uh, I skipped through that part. So I let it sit for maybe five minutes. Then I turn it over and look at it and maybe adjust it if it needs it. Well, that's what we're doing here. They're looking good. Now that it's sat, I can turn it around and just keep lining up all the joints. When all these joints are lined up, it should be in the right place. When the rings get a lot bigger like that, sometimes I like to flip them over like this and put a flat board across there so I know that I have pressure all the way around that ring. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let this one sit for probably the rest of the morning. And maybe this afternoon we'll start turning on it. And then I think I'm going to have that surprise for you that I told you I was going to do. Got it all set up to turn the inside. You can see I'm using a steady rest here. A couple of reasons why. These kind of glue ups tend to have a lot of harmonics. This will help with that. The walls are only 3 8 thick just because of how I cut it to get this many rings. So I just think this will help with that as well. And the base is pretty small in diameter. So I just feel more confident having that on there. I'll start with a half inch bowl gouge, basically just cleaning up the walls and taking the bottom down just a little bit. It's 600 RPM. So I think I'll go over it with a negative rig scraper and we can sand it and then do it the outside. Okay, it's time to sand it and I'll be using a 2 inch disc starting with 80 and we'll sand to 400. I'll get that done and we'll get set up and turn the outside. I'm going to be going forward at about 300 RPM. I can't imagine that taking too long, so I'll be back and we'll turn the outside. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned I would show you something that you could make. You won't need a special machine or special cutting fixtures. Well, here it is. There are 11 joints here. Each one of these joints have been cut freehand on the bandsaw. No cutting fixtures. All the joints fit together perfect. This is a lot of fun to do. When you learn how to do this, it'll open up all kinds of possibilities. So I'm going to make a special video just for this, but I wanted to let you see that. It'll be out in a couple weeks or so. So let's get back and finish turning the one we're working on. The inside's all sanded up, and now we'll turn the outside. You can see this is a little smaller here and I was concerned with the strength of the wood 
And actually, I don't think I mentioned the type of wood I used here, but on the Vortex Bowl I bought some Cambian oak and alder to make it because it was experimental. I had some left over and this was kind of experimental. It worked out pretty good. I wished I would have used nicer wood. But this was pretty cost efficient. But the trouble is, it's not the strongest wood in the world. So I'm also going to use this disc on the inside to help stabilize it. And actually, I would use that with any wood that I'm using. Again, because th these create a lot of harmonics. So, let's see if I can do this with a half inch bowl gouge. And I need to take a lot off the rim and try to put a little curve that way to match what I did on the top. Let me get my face shield on and we'll get going. I'm 180 RPM. Okay, that just did. About all I have left to do is get a blend between this bowl and the paduk. And I want to put a little radius in there. So I'll use this small carbide to blend this together and I can leave a little filling. Still about 760 RPM. Okay, I think uh, maybe I'll go over it with a negative rake scraper and then we'll sand it. Okay, time to sand. Alright, we're all set to sand the outside. It's going to be the same thing. Two inch disc starting with 80 grit going through 400. And uh, I'll be going in reverse this time around 375 RPM. And I'll get my dust collector going, get a mask on, and I'll start sanding. So I'll see you when it's time to get the finish on it. Time for the finish and I've been going back and forth with myself between polycrylic and lacquer. I haven't done lacquer for a while so I plan on spraying multiple coats of lacquer on this. Let's just see how it looks with some finish. Okay, that's, I think that's going to look alright. I think it looks better spinning. So, I'll just show you this side. It'll be easier to see and I'll get the back side on while this is drying. I've got all the lacquer sprayed on and I really didn't count how many coats I put on it, but I, I think it was probably six. So now I'm going to go over it with axe abrasive paste. I like to do that to most of my finishes. It really gives it a nice smooth feel. Okay. 
Okay, that should be enough. I'm going to start out around 400 RPM. Let's have a look at that. So even though this is actually a really nice looking finish, I'm going to use the polishing paste on it. I'm mean, using the, the blue paper towel because it's softer. Okay, let's see what we have here. Yeah, I like it. It looks good. So, I'll be right back and I'll show you what we have here. Here it is, and I think it looks okay. The only thing I really don't like about it is the dark wood is Cambia oak, and that's red oak that they bake in an oven to make it insect resistant. It also makes it a little bit brittle, and on top of that, it's got a really open grain in it, and I wasn't able to get the surface quite as smooth as I wanted, and I really didn't want to spray any more lacquer on it. But it looks okay. And I think the underside really looks nice. I like that a lot. That little base is made out of Paduk. So I finished 10 and 5 sixteenths in diameter, and it's four inches tall, and the walls are three eighths of an inch. I used about six coats of gloss lacquer sprayed on, and then I use axe abrasive paste and polish on it. And it got a really nice finish on it. So I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know what you think about it. So also, keep a watch for the other video I'm making for a simpler version of this that I know you'll be able to make. And I'll have it out in a couple weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you liked the video. If you did, one way is to give it a thumbs up. If you leave a comment, that would also be great. I do read them all. And we all would appreciate it if you could share our videos around. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And for all of you who are, I am very grateful. Thank you so much. I do all types of turnings, from segmented to very natural turnings from logs. Let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.